Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. Now, before I get started, I want to go ahead and tell you one of the cardinal sins or things that you do not do when you're filming, which is wear text on your t-shirt because it gets flipped and mirrored. But that's okay because you're not going to make too much fun, right? Because we're amongst friends in this community. And that's exactly today's topic. Today, we are going to talk about friends in C++. So there is an actual keyword called friend in C++. So let's go ahead and take a look here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go on to CPP reference and in the top right corner, search for friend. And we'll go ahead and see what friend declaration means. Now we can do this with functions and classes as well. And since we've been talking about classes, I want to go ahead and continue to talk about what exactly a friend is. So let's go ahead and look at this definition just a little bit closer. It says the friend declaration appears in a class body and grants a function or another class access to private and protected, which we'll talk about later in this series, members of the class where the friend declaration appears. OK, so what does this mean? Well, let's go ahead and look at an example. So typically we've been writing our code and it's looked something like this when we've been learning about classes. Uh, now, usually we'll put our class in a different header file with the interface and the implementation in a separate C++ file. But of course, we're just going to, for brevity, put this all in one file. But anyways, the point is that we have a class here and then we have different levels of encapsulation that we can have for our member functions and our member variables. So in this particular example, I'm going to have one private variable here just for demonstration purposes to remind you what private does. So if I go ahead and create an instance of an object that is user defined type, and then I try to do instance dot M private variable, and let's just go ahead and set it to some value here. And then I'll compile using a modern version of C++ as we do in this series dash O program. Well, we will get this compile time error here that says error. This variable here that's part of the class is private within this context, so we cannot access it. That's what private allows us to do. It encapsulates oftentimes state that we don't want to expose to our clients or somebody who's going to use our class. That way they can't set this to some illegal value or mess up the internals of what is going on with this object. So that's one of the powers of C++ that you don't get in other languages like C, for instance. You can perform this sort of information hiding or encapsulation that we call it. Now, the exception to this or how we can actually gain access to this member variable could be through a friend function. So allow me to demonstrate and I'll go ahead and um, scroll down here just so you can see syntactically we can declare a friend function here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is say void print private member variables of user defined type. So I'll just abbreviate that as UDT. And of course, this is a terrible function name. It's a little bit uh, perhaps too, too long here, but it is specific. And basically what we do is pass in one parameter here of our user defined type. Let's just say it is U. And then I can just do U. Well, let's just go ahead and print it out. And let's say M private variable. And let's just go ahead and print out the value here of u.m private variable and an end line here. And let's go ahead and try this uh, function out here. So let's go ahead and just leave this as is. And let's call our print function here. I'll pass in this instance here. And let's go ahead and see what happens. OK, so I'm going to again try to compile here. And well, again, same error, still the same problem. I haven't used the friend keyword yet. So let's make one little adaptation here. So following from this example here, what I have here, the friend member function, is that I am just going to, as part of this class here, I'm just going to create a friend function with the friend keyword, the return type, and then the name of this function here, and then all of the parameters. OK, so that is the prototype here. Now I compile it and now I can run it. Now this value here is just going to be garbage because I haven't initialized it. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, do that here in our constructor. And we'll use just to practice a list initializer here. 
And let's go ahead and just initialize this to zero. Okay, so something of that uh, form. And here we can see that we are printing out our member variable here because of this friend function here. So I'll go ahead and fit this on one screen just so you can see a little bit easier. Now, what if I go ahead and put this friend function in the private section and then I run it, it doesn't matter. Just as long as within this class here, we have friend and this function here. So again, what is the friend keyword doing? Well, it's allowing access through this function to all the private member variables of this type here. Okay, so when should we use this? What is the actual use case for friend functions? And in fact, we can even go a little bit beyond just friend functions here, uh, which I have highlighted here and here. And let's say I have another class here. So I'm going to create a class here. I'm going to call it uh, private security uh, info information, something like that. And let's just go ahead and create this. And I'll make sure I spell everything right. Security info. And let's just say this has some private information here and passcode or whatever. Now I can actually make within this user defined type if it needs to access any uh, private variables here. So let's say I have uh, a private security info, um, info, something like that. I can actually make this a friend class here. So friend class private security info. And I can compile this. And now this class also within any of its member functions, so let's go ahead and pop in here, could access any of the private information here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and demonstrate this. So if I do m info dot passcode uh, equals, you know, seven, uh, this is um, not supposed to be allowed. Well, let me go ahead and uh, under normal circumstances, unless I go ahead and move this definition up here. And well, hmm, this is strange. So I said this user defined class, its friend is private security, so I should be allowed to access the members here. And well, this concept is sort of the same here from what we have below here, where I said, hey, this user defined type here is a friend or this function is a friend of this class, so it should be able to access the members here. Uh, but we do have to be actually a little bit careful on the ordering when it comes to uh, these classes here. And I'm actually going to say, hey, who are my friends? Who can look at my private information? And instead, in the private security info, I'm going to say my friend here is actually this user defined type here. Okay, so let me go ahead and recompile and now I can rerun this. Okay, so let me go ahead and just show all the code on one screen, recap, and then talk a little bit about um, why we may or may not want to use friend classes. So as we started this video, I created a user defined type by default classes, all, everything is public. So if I have any member variables here, for instance, they could not be accessible from other functions, which I demonstrated here. That is, unless you declare this function here as a friend of this class here. So my friends here, which is this function defined here, can access the private member variables um, such as this value here. And then I went a step further and said, not only can we have friend functions, but we can also have friend classes. And we have to be a little bit careful figuring out who our friends are. It's sort of a one-way relationship if you want to think about it that way. But that is to say that private security info says, well, this information here is private. And in almost all cases, it's private unless you're my friend. Then I want to give access to, if you're a user defined type, so anything that is this type, then this type can access passcode. If I had another class that used private security information or whatever, then it may not be the case unless it is explicitly defined as a friend. Now, just looking at this, it's a little bit complicated. In fact, it was a little bit complicated to implement because I had to think about this sort of one-way relationship. In fact, I could have perhaps my user-defined type 
also be a friend class for this, and then they could share information back and forth, but already it's getting a little bit complicated to talk about. So here is the general rule of thumb with friend functions and friend classes. The general rule is to avoid them. I can't think of many good cases. Sometimes folks like to use them for operator overloading. For instance, that is the example given on the CPP uh, reference page here with the OStream operator here. For instance, if you want to not have this class, have a uh, particular member function for doing operator overloading here. I think that's the most common use case where you'll actually see this. The advantage being that this specific free function here that you're declaring as a friend you don't have to worry about other things as much when we talk about, say, inheritance and which functions get called and some of these things. So maybe there is some reason to use it there. But in general, I would say friend functions are an indication of poor uh, API design. The other reason you want to be very careful with friend functions, if I expand this, is as far as the compiler is concerned, if I declare or add that this is a friend uh, function or who my friends are from within this class, it doesn't stop the client, so some other user like me or you, from creating your own class here, user defined type. It's just sort of the friendships just resolve based off of the type name. So that would allow me to access any of this private information. Uh, which would be so from my friend here, user defined type. So I could get any of this information here based off of just creating my own class file that happens to have that name. So for common things like graph, node, common data types like that, you can sort of break the friendship rules for whatever is intended. So between friends here, you and me, First, you're going to forgive me for wearing the text on my t-shirt. Secondly, I hope you're going to think very carefully about using friend functions or friend classes within your code and thinking if it is a code smell or a potential vulnerability that might be a problem later on in the road for you. But at the least, now you know about friends. As an exercise, I think it might be useful to find a particular open source project in C++ that you like and just grab for the word friend to see how often it's used. My guess is you won't see it very often. Maybe you'll see it in the case of operator overloading, but that would be about it. All right. So folks, I hope that was an interesting lesson for you. I hope you expanded your C++ knowledge a little bit and are going to be a little bit wary about where to use friend functions and friend classes. And if you're feeling like a friend right now, feel free to subscribe and welcome to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.